do we ever consider who was the first to create university when we talk about it? Is it from a European country? No, it was founded by a Moroccan woman named Fatima al Fehri. Fatima al Fehri was born in Tunisia in 800 before Christ and she died around 880 before Christ. She is also known as Ummu al Banain and she comes from a wealthy and educated family. Her success. She inherited money from her father, which she puts toward the construction of mosques for the Muslim community, which is called Al Karawiyin. The Al Karawiyin Mosque is among the oldest mosques and has been recognized as the first university in the world. The official education system on public university takes place in the Al Karawiyin Mosque, which later became the site of the creation of Al Karawiyin University. Fatima's decision to build a mosque that serves as a center of knowledge is not wrong because it not only completes the aspiration of this world of knowledge but succeed in establishing a center of knowledge that flows knowledge to students forever. The mosque began to serve the surrounding community and seekers of knowledge from other regions. Students from all over the world travel there to study Islam, astronomy, language and science. The library in al Karawiyin is considered to be the oldest in the world. The library's collection of over 4,000 manuscripts includes a 9th century Quran and the earliest collection of Hadith. Arabic numerals are known and used in Europe through this university. Al Karawiyin Mosque become one of the centers and main destination for scholars to come to face. The university produced so many prominent and famous Muslim figures, scholars, and thinkers such as Abu Abdullah as Sati, Abu Al Abbas as Zawawi, Ibn Rashid as Sati, and more. My name is Adam, and I will continue on contribution of Fatima Al Fihri. In every history and story, there are definitely lessons we need to take. Some goes for the story of Fatima that we built today. So, the first of all, Fatima al-Fihri spent 80 years for the progress of the world education civilization. Secondly, has a noble heart despite being rich and aristocratic. Thirdly, love to connect the friendships. Then, loves to donate with the wealth that Fatima owned as a result of her tireless business and effort, she always donated her assets. Next, love of knowledge. Good at growing the business too, and have the determination and ambitious in every work that she done. Love fasting circumcision. Success in developing most and higher education centers. So, Fatima Al Fihri has been an inspiration for all the Muslim women to continue to work among the Ummah by continuing spread, teach, and invite to the goodness of Islam. When thinking of the oldest universities in the world, probably the first one that come to most people's minds are Oxford and Bologna. But according to UNESCO and the Guinness World Records, al Karawi University is the oldest existing and continually operating educational institution in the world. Just as it is common in modern universities, al Karawi held regular debates and symposia, promoting the exchange of knowledge and developments of science. The university itself was founded on the concept of higher education as we know it today. Al Fihri's idea was to create a social space enabling intellectual exchanges for progressive learning and teaching. It would not be wrong to say that Fatima's ideas and vision influenced many universities across Europe. Fatima Al Fihri would in the year 266 Hijri has left a great service to the history of the civilization of Islamic world, which is not small but always growing forever. In more ways than one, the story of Fatima al Fihri is an inspirational story of striving against social norms, creating educational opportunities, and working toward a cause. It is very much a story that needs to be told in today's age at a time when there is hyper focus on the institution of education and, more importantly, on the disparities it sustains and perpetuates. Modern education, as argued by many, is to reinforce social norms and cultivate and reproduce social intellectual and economic inequality through its focus and indoctrination and submission to authority.